Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the latest of our Caseware webinars. Uh, and today we'll be looking at annotations and referencing. Uh, so my name is Rob and I'll be taking you through uh, this particular webinar. Um, so let's first cover a bit of the admin. Um, we do encourage questions as much as possible. Um, if you have a question, please can you submit it using the question function that is available. Um, hopefully you see either one of these screens um, so if you can use those little fields there to, to uh, ask any questions you might have and we will do our best to answer as many as possible we may answer them immediately uh, through the private question function if it is perhaps a question that's quite specific to your firm um, we will do it that way if it's a more general question and others may benefit from seeing the response uh, we will uh, perhaps leave it uh, to the end of the for for the Q and A session, so we will have a Q and A session at the end for a few minutes to help address some of the, the those those more detailed questions. Um, please don't use the hand raising function. Uh, we have disabled that just due to the the sheer amount of people that are involved in these webinars. Uh, it just isn't really feasible to have everyone chipping in with their their questions live. Um, so any questions that we do answer, uh, and even those that we perhaps don't even have time for, we will publish those online uh, probably later this week um, we have obviously the responses as well with a, a recording of this webinar okay um, agenda wise then so we are looking at annotations and referencing so we're looking at the case where working papers desktop functionality um, things like commentary notes tick marks document references hyperlinks highlighting and placeholders so a fair bit for us to get through so uh, I'm really just now going to go straight into a case where file and we'll have a little look at some of those features um, and obviously yeah as I say if you have any questions please feel free to, to raise those and, and we'll start to tidy it up at the end hopefully um, okay so what I've got here then is a, a case where file I've got the fixed asset section kind of open and on display with a, a couple of documents I'm going to use during the course of the webinar. Um, to be clear, this is an audit file, so one of our audit advanced files, but uh, th that doesn't bear too much um, relevance on, on the file and, and the functionality that I'm going to use, to be fair. This could easily be an accounts production file or a tax file for that matter. Um, okay, so the, the first thing I'm going to look at is this detailed lead schedule, so a tangible fixed asset lead schedule. And you can see I've already started work on populating this annotation column, and that's effectively the majority of what we're going to look at today is, is populating this column to bring in references annotations commentary that hopefully the reviewer uh, or colleagues will find useful informative and, and help to, to to finalize the file um, the first thing we're going to look at then is commentary notes and there are two already in this file so if I hover over the little number one icon there that's telling me that this is the head office building so this freehold property item actually is the head office building of this client and that was created by me uh, today. By the look of it, 11th of November. Uh, and also, if I look at number two, uh, again, another note that would be relevant on this file. Uh, that's actually just the, the ID of those two assets that make up the additions figure there. And again, created by me today. So let's see how that would happen uh, live. I would right click on a, right, a row uh, and I would attach a new note. So the right click option is, is really what we're going to be focusing on today. Also, if I look at the home seg segment of the toolbar, you'll also see these icons here. These are effectively all the icons that I'm going to use today. Um, so you can access them from here, uh, or you can right click, or if you're uh, familiar with the control F2, control F5, F6, etc., you can use those, uh, certainly if you're creating a lot. The, the very top option, annotate, allows us to do a lot of the annotation in one go. I'm going to try and break it down today so it's a little bit clearer, but um, those familiar with this system may use annotate instead so firstly let me add a new note the note then I'll just put a, a dummy note in today and 
what we can also see here is this tick box and that's just asking me if I want to show this annotation on all documents. Uh, the basis here being that this E1-1D document uh, contains the row B024 and therefore the note will be assigned to this document. Is it the case that you want it to go to every document that contains that particular nominal code line? Uh, if so, you would tick the box and I'm going to do that today. So there's note number three. And as I say, anyone that hovers over that, that icon, that number, will see the pop-up appear. Also, uh, a slightly different way, a clearer way perhaps of viewing uh, notes. If you go to view, show, and notes, you can see them listed on the right-hand side. Also worth bearing in mind uh, with any of these annotations, if I was to print preview, you can see that there was a little key listed at the bottom here that will help me to decipher these annotations. And that's the same if you were to right click and save as PDF or Excel, those annotations obviously would go with it with a key to explain them. So commentary then, one way of doing it is on per line item, right click, new note. Sometimes though, there is commentary that perhaps is more general to the document. It doesn't apply necessarily to one particular row like this comment I've put at the bottom here. Um, so this line just allows me some space to, to write some general comments. And to be fair, you may decide that that commentary needs to be either a bit bigger, a bit clearer. Uh, you can actually tailor from the home tab, sorry, from the tools tab, uh, the font settings. So on the tools, you can adjust the font settings. Um, so for example, the item I want to adjust is the commentary itself. Uh, you can actually see that there's various other things as well, like the note text, uh, the numbers, uh, the, the document number, for example, is another common one you might want to adjust the size of. Um, but commentary is the one I'm going to go for today. And the size, I'll make it deliberately very large today so you can see the effect. And I'll make it red as well. So if, if you feel that on this particular file, the commentary is going to be very important, you can start to, to, to change that. So that, that's quite quite useful to know. So that's that's commentary notes. The next thing we said we'd look at would be the tick marks. And again, I've already applied some tick marks to this file. These P's here, these little P symbols, they are tick marks. And they're explaining that these figures agree to the prior year file, which is obviously handy. Um, so again, I'm going to apply a tick mark to this line here on the basis that we hope it does agree to the prior year file. So I'm, I'm going to right click and add a new tick mark. And the tick mark that I assign in this case will be agreed to prior. So these are the default tick marks that you'll, you'll find with our audit products. Uh, you can customize these though and add to them or remove items if you don't agree with the list. So I'll show you how, how you can do that in a second. Anyway, I'll apply agree to prior to this particular row. Um, and again, I, you can see another one that's slightly different here, agree to invoice here. So there, there are different tick marks you can use. Uh, but as I say, you can customize the way that they are shown. Uh, so if I was to go to engagement at the top here and then look at tick marks, these are the default tick marks that I've, I've got in this particular file. So for example, though, if I didn't want to stick with agree to prior here, um, I could change that to a nice green color perhaps and agree to invoice I might want that to be a, a red item for example so you can completely customize these tick marks you can also add additional items as well so I may want to include something to say that something's been physically verified and I might indicate that by putting in a, a V so if I just type in a V there um, so that you can stick with just a text item, um, but on most cases, it, it's quite nice to have a, uh, a tick mark next to it. So again, I'm going to have perhaps a, a blue tick next to things that have been physically verified. Um, so that's how tick marks work. And if I come back to my document here, you can see how they, those have changed color slightly. Uh, and if I was to say that this uh, addition here, let's say that I have physically verified it, I can right click, add a new tick mark, and my new item will be there. So yeah, tick marks can be customized. Um, and I know a lot of firms that are doing that to make it a lot more applicable to what their, their usual style. 
Next time we're going to look at document references. Um, so I can obviously reference to other documents. Again, we've already got one in this particular file. So this PF16 document, uh, obviously we, we've got a document that perhaps uh, gives a bit more detail about this head office building that we've already mentioned. Uh, so if I click on that PF16, hopefully then is a Word document that contains some information about the head office building. So again, the way you add those in, using a right click option, just before I, I do that, it's worth just mentioning some of our audit advanced users will already be aware of the functionality that's already exists in the in the checklist there. You have a reference column, um, so you'll already see references included. Uh, you may see these blue icons that allow you to add additional references, and even if you've used them, you can still right click and insert additional new references. Um, and those references can then obviously go to any document. And in fact, if I know the document PF16, for example, I can start to, to type in PF16. And if I now type in PF100, that's my due diligence document. So references from the audit advance point of view can be applied very, very easily using uh, the, the right click or just double clicking on, on the icons here just to link to a document. And I'll just link to the optimizer today just to give you an idea how that works. Um, you can also give labels as well. So you can just give a, a quick comment here using the same functionality. Okay. So referencing can be applied in that way if you're using the audit advanced system. Um, if I just come back now to case we're working papers, uh, we have a similar functionality uh, on, on the lead schedule. So that's how the PF16 uh, has come in. So for example, if I was to right click on this figure here and insert a new document reference, again, I can pick a document and today I'll just pick the prelim just to show you how that would work. So document references, right click, very straightforward. The next thing just to, to kind of lead on from that then is something called a hyperlink reference, which is perhaps something you'd prefer to use on uh, something like an Excel worksheet, for example. Anyway, you see the TFA register link that I've included on this file, I'm actually using a hyperlink reference. And again, I'm going to use the same functionality on this line here. The idea being that there is a TFA register. If I click on that link, for example, that will take me to the 73,000 figure, which I was looking at here. Okay. So this document, this Excel document is all set up um, for hyperlinks. So the 73,000, then I can, I can link straight to that. And if I sort of close that and just set up a new hyperlink reference here and to the same document, but obviously to a different place, if I right click hyperlink reference, I give it a label. So the label I've used all the way through here is TFA register. The link type, well, it does depend on what kind of document you're looking at. So you could perhaps even link to a case view document. Uh, normally though, it's, it tends to be Word or Excel. So if you had a bookmark in a Word document, you can link to that. Uh, with Excel workbooks, you can link to either a named cell or a, a, any cell for that matter. And with a PDF document, you could link to a particular page number, for example. So I think Excel is probably the most common. It asks you then to pick out the document. So I'm gonna pick out one of the only two Excel documents we have in this file. You can see how it pinpoints me to those particular documents. The location then will, in this case, be the motor vehicles tab, being that we are looking at a motor vehicles value. And the cell I know from looking at this document before is L17. Okay, so I've got a link there to the fixed asset register document, which is an Excel file already in this file. And you can see it takes me there to L17, which is that 37,000 that we were looking for. Okay, so hyperlink reference much better if you're if you're looking at Excel spreadsheets. Uh, obviously, just opening the document is not really enough for you to to understand or provide evidence of where that figure comes from. Okay, so that's hyperlink referencing. Um, just one more thing on on referencing to documents that's, that's probably worth mentioning. You can see how I've got the invoice here. Uh, and what that is a hyperlink reference as well, uh, is just looking at page one of this wagon invoice document. Okay, so this is a, obviously there is only one page to this document, so it's it's uh, 
it, it, it's not terribly important that I pick out the page number, but that is what's happened in this case. The reason I really wanted to show you this PDF document, though, is because we have similar functionality that we can use from a PDF here. That's only because, though, I've chosen to open up this PDF, what I would refer to as internally. Uh, what that means is it's a tab within Caseware rather than uh, opening up in Adobe. Uh, just to explain how I've come to that particular function, if I go back to my document manager, this E5 document is the wagon invoice, the PDF document. And if I right click and visit the properties of this document, you can see how it's set to internal image viewer under the viewer drop down menu. By default, PDFs will come in typically with the external viewer allocated, meaning that if I open the document, it opens up in Adobe as, as you'd probably expect. However, if I was to go to the properties and select internal image viewer, it will now open up internally. And in fact, Caseware will remember that preference and if any additional PDF documents I bring in will open up internally as well. So what's the point of doing that though? Well, if I was to open this document now, I can start to create annotations in here. For example, that 7,000, if I want to reference that back to the lead schedule, I can insert a document reference here and link that back to the lead schedule. And I can move that around, so I might want it there, for example. So I've now got a link between the invoice and the lead schedule. Okay. And obviously, any, any hyperlink references as well, I can also include in here. I can insert tick marks. So if this is, is asset has been physically verified, for example, I've got my new physically verified tick mark. I can put that somewhere, perhaps here. And one more option that might be quite nice to see in a PDF is the highlighting tool. Okay, it's only available in the these image documents like PDFs. And I can perhaps highlight something like the fact it's sold as seen. Uh, and I can give that a color. Let's go for yellow. And mark some sort of comment in there as well. And I might want to highlight that in a nice pretty pink. Okay. What these highlighting tools are, work best on, if I'm honest, are the things like your age creditors, age debtors listing, big long list of transactions where you're trying to point out or, or highlight a couple of uh, unusual transactions or transactions that are particularly high, particularly low, uh, negative. Um, so it does work very well for that kind of thing. So again, I can see the comment. So it's just an extension to the comment, really. You can highlight a particular area and then give your comment. Okay. The only other thing that I really wanted to cover was something called placeholders. And if I come back to the document manager, just worth pointing out that the A11 in our audit advanced systems, uh, the Mercy system anyway, is the financial statements. So uh, placeholders are actually something that we use. Uh, things like the uh, engagement letter as well, you will find uh, as a placeholder in our audit systems. Um, that's not to say you can't create your own though. Um, for example, this wagon invoice, we've said that we've physically verified the asset. Uh, if we want to evidence that by perhaps putting, putting a copy of a photo in there um, or a copy of the logbook, uh, we could start to do that. And if that's something that, that a manager has perhaps requested, one way of requesting that information is by simply creating a placeholder. So if I right click here and create a new document and that document I expect to become a, a copy of a photograph perhaps in this case, um, I can I can place that in advance, meaning that I've saved the reference, it acts as a reminder, um, and you'll see how that works. Now, it doesn't really matter here which kind of document I create. I, I'm creating a new document, but ultimately I will make it a placeholder. So it doesn't actually matter what document type I give it here because none of these actually really apply. Um, the one I tend to use, therefore, is document link on the basis that the logo is very blank and doesn't mislead anyone. So if I go for document link, you'll, you'll perhaps see why in a second. So I'm going to leave it as number E6. And the name for this document, though, will perhaps be um, wagon photograph. 
the important bit is I make it a placeholder. Okay. If I now okay that, we have now got E6 as a placeholder. If I try and open the document, obviously it doesn't work. There is no real document there, but it does act as a reminder and I can start to create perhaps an issue on this document, reminding a particular member of staff, perhaps uh, in my case, perhaps me, to make sure they, they grab a copy of this, this photograph uh, and use the placeholder. So when it comes to using the placeholder, then, well, how does that work? Well, I do have a photo of this wagon, which is quite handy. Uh, so I'll show you now how we can um, bring that in. So it's really just a case of drag and drop it. Hopefully you guys know from the drag and drop options that the black line indicates where the, these documents are going to be placed. Um, if I go over a placeholder like E6 and the same will be for the A11 here, the, the black line disappears. And when that disappears, it means you are probably going to replace the document. You still, however, do have the option to insert it as E7 in our case. But for us, I think replacing it is what we want to achieve. So we now have E6 wagon photo in the file. And it's just worth pointing out as well that although that's opened up in paint on my particular machine, uh, again, I could set the properties here so that this document opens up internally if I wanted to annotate it. So I could start to add tick marks, highlights, document references on that if I wanted to as well, similar to how we saw with the PDF. Okay, so that really covers most of the annotation options that, that we've got available. Uh, what I'm going to do now is hand it back to some questions. So let me just collect in some of the questions that have come in. Um, okay. So a quick reminder then that if you have got any questions, now's pretty much the last chance you've got to raise those. So the first question I've got then is to do with the, the caseware version, actually, it's, it's mentioning that you know, are these options only available in caseware 2016? Uh, so yeah, as you, as you hopefully would have seen, I'm using the newer version of caseware, caseware 2016, which hopefully most of you are sort of moving across to now. Um, no, these options aren't specific to caseware 2016, so uh, although we don't encourage that you stick to Caseware 2014 for too much longer, those options are still available, so there's nothing holding you there. Um, can I share custom tick marks to other files? Um, so yes, absolutely you can. So if you created custom tick marks, um, it's something that some firms do at a firm level. Uh, the idea is you can copy them from file to file, so it might be something that you would apply perhaps on the, the setup of the file. Uh, it's using uh, copy components. So we've covered the copy components um, tool a number of times in our webinars, actually, but there, there was one specific to copy components back in November 16. So well worth having a look at that. That will mention tick marks there. Um, so yeah, definitely can copy those to, from file to file. Uh, it might be something you end up uh, trying to embed in the template. Uh, in which case you would get all your files created with those custom tick marks. But if that, that boat is passed, then uh, certainly you can copy them from file to file. Yeah, use copy components. Uh, the other one we've got here, uh, talking about PDF annotations, are they lost if someone opens the document externally? Because uh, obviously, yeah, you'd make the annotations by opening the document internally. Uh, yeah, if someone opens it externally, you won't lose the tick marks. They won't be able to see them. Because uh, obviously they'll, they'll just see the PDF and the, the annotations won't exist in the PDF. Um, but certainly if you were to then open it internally, you would still see those PDF. They do not get deleted um, for that reason. Um, and just a, a comment on, on Excel, and it's it's a, it's a subject that I'll, we'll perhaps cover in, in an additional webinar at some point in the future. Um, but can tick marks, document references, etc., be included on Excel documents? Um, and yes, absolutely, they can using something called Caseware Connector. So Caseware Connector is an add-on uh, to Caseware Working Papers. It works in conjunction with Excel and Word, um, um, and that's something that you can uh, acquire from us. Um, so I would suggest you, you, worth checking, you haven't already got it, because a lot of firms uh, I spoke to have got it, they just perhaps don't all realize. Um, so check that first with your Caseware Administrator. Uh, and if, if you are the caseware administrator for your firm, then check with your account manager on how you might get hold of that. 
or perhaps for a demonstration of how it works. Okay, um, so that that covers the questions that I have. Um, what I'll do now then is, is just perhaps have a quick chat about the the training options if that that's got your uh, interest on using some more of the working papers toolkit functionality uh, and there's much much more of it by the way that was really just uh, the tip of the iceberg um, we do obviously include that kind of um, instruction in our introduction to audit advanced day so we see it really more as an audit tool um, so we do include a, a good chunk of that, that kind of annotation options in our introduction to audit advanced days and we have got a couple of public days coming up on the 25th of October and the 14th of December um, so that might be if, if, if really audit advanced if you needed to top up on that you would get it in that course anyway so that those perhaps are options but also we do have a, a, a specific working papers toolkit online e-course uh, which is a, a roughly couple of hour course training videos um, which we, show you these options and a lot lot more and we would also offer on-site courses and we've done quite a number of these for different firms uh, that would generally be a half day course unless you really wanted to go to town on it um, so those can be arranged um, with us um, and if you are interested in any of these courses whether that be on-site online or public you can register or inquire about those on our website caseware.co.uk forward slash training and you can obviously email us at training at caseware.co.uk and next just a quick look at any of the upcoming webinars that we have so 2nd October is the next one now looking back at accounts advance specifically and the group consolidation dialogue uh, although I guess it does have an impact on audit as well so if you are interested in the group consolidations dialogue some of the functionality and the options that are included in that dialogue there are a number in there and it's well worth uh, making sure you know how they work uh, it's quite a common uh, issue I find with, with group files that some of the options in there aren't selected properly so if you've ever questioned what those are, are all about then definitely worth subscribing to that uh, further November we've got the year-end close function so that really could apply to any of the desktop products audit tax accounts um, so year-end close again perhaps thinking about some of the the additional options that you might take advantage of when you're performing year-end close not just the obvious ones like creating a new file and uh, 10 days later looking back at caseware cloud so five collaboration features available in caseware cloud so um, hopefully so some of you at least are using caseware cloud functionality you may be aware of a couple of those but I doubt all five so that those might be quite useful and uh, we are constantly scheduling more and more webinars so if you do have any ideas on potential webinars we could provide uh, please feel free to pop that in the feedback that you'll be asked for at the end of this webinar uh, and, and we'll definitely try and include those where we can and to register for these caseware.co.uk forward slash events and if you want to watch any of the past webinars and they are all recorded along with all the questions and, and published on our website the kb.caseware.co.uk website um, and you can always watch those at any time in the future okay well that's it from me today uh, I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your afternoon um, and I'll no doubt speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.